All right, so on the bench today we have a Neotech 2515C standard resolution arcade monitor chassis, and this was sent to me because it's in vertical collapse. And just off of the initial inspection, it's in really, really rough shape. And I say that because the focus wire is broken off, off the uh, neck socket, the focus wire is broken right off. Um, we don't have any we don't have any broken pots right out of the gate so whenever I get a chassis that's vertical collapse I always check to make sure there's no broken pots because that's usually the most common cause but our vertical size and our vertical hold appear to be good and vertical position so all three of our vertical pots appear to be visually okay so not too worried about that aspect of this but the main thing is is that this whole chassis is loose in the frame if you see here the whole thing's loose in the frame and the only thing holding this chassis to the frame is the HOT if we zoom in here and look you can see the only thing holding this chassis in is the HOT and that's just insane so I don't know who decided to work on this or who decided to do what with this, but yeah, it uh, the frame is rusted fairly badly, which shouldn't cause a problem in theory, but it's been recapped. Of course, there's things like this bent over resistor, very common, because um, people just don't know really what they're doing when it comes to this stuff. The vertical IC is this guy right in there, so we may end up having to change that, but you know, this was serviced by P&L, which is notorious for only doing the absolute bare minimum to get these fixed. And somebody asked me one day, I use this tool here to adjust my horizontal width coils. And somebody asked me where I got it. Well, they come from the Neotech chassis. If you look here, the Neotech chassis come with an adjustment, plastic adjustment tool in the horizontal width coil already from the factory. So that's where I get these things from, is these donor boards. So it's been recapped. Uh, I've already taken a look and the underside isn't too butchered, but if you turn it, you see here the whole thing wants to fall out. The whole thing wants to fall out of here and the only thing holding it in is the poor HOT over here. So I, I, I don't know if this possibly got shifted and arced itself and took out the vertical IC, I can't say, but with it being loose like this, that's absolutely definitely an issue because you can see how loose it is and it probably shifted over at some point and, and they, somebody turned it on and when it got powered up um, you know it, it grounded out something here or, or, or over here who knows so what we're gonna have to do here is take this step by step and first thing is is to secure this chassis is to secure this in the frame once we secure this in the frame I don't even think this is the correct HOT for one and two, they've got, oh, geez, this is just terrible. Let's take this off of here, there we go. And two, they got this giant long screw in here. So I'll see, I have a, a donor chassis here. So I'm going to steal everything from this one and make this one right if we can get it working. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is, pretty bad um, yeah okay so I guess first things first let's see if we can find some screws to secure this in place because that's gonna be step number one and you don't have to you don't have to take this chassis out of the frame to do any work to it unlike other chassis so um, let me see if I can find some screws uh, and I'll come back in one moment okay so I was able to successfully locate enough screws to secure this properly uh, it took me a minute but I got one there's no screw that goes in over here that's why this little tab is there but we got the one there's no not one here either but I got one for here I got one for here I got one for oh, uh, that's the video cable I got one for here and there and then down in there by the flyback so and then, of course, over here is another little uh, groove for it to sit in. So I got all of the screws installed. So the first thing I want to do here is 
remove this uh, remove this neck forward so it's not in our way disconnect that disconnect this and that and you know what? Oh, I thought I could disconnect this but apparently not you can't disconnect this connector here well um, that sucks well okay I guess I, for some reason, I was thinking I could disconnect that. I didn't look at it thoroughly enough, but no big deal. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to have to resolder in our focus wire, but we'll do that later. For now, let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom and do it. Because this had a cap kit and some of these, uh, some of the work doesn't look too good. Like, for instance, on the filter cap here, if we look at our filter cap someone replaced, and it's not the best quality here. You can see that, uh, yeah, it's uh, all, barely even soldered in there. So that is no good. So just things like that. So I'm going to fix that and then go through and look at all this and do continuity testing, maybe some reflow. Yeah, I'm almost certain that this thing shifted around and shorted something out, probably the vertical IC. But uh, the owner of this uh, is uh, a gentleman by the name of Jojo Robles, and he runs the Wicked Arcade. And he sent this to me for repair, and I said, sure, I'll take a look. So I don't know who did the work, or, or for all I know, it came from, it might have come from P&L this way. I have no idea. I never had a chassis repaired from P&L, but you get a, a mixed bag of reviews saying, you know, the only... Like if, let's say, this capacitor is the cause of the problem, they'll change this capacitor and nothing else. So, you know, I can't really fault them for that because if there's only one thing wrong, that's fine. But a little preventive maintenance goes a long way sometimes, too. So, uh, so let me first fix this filter cap. Okay, that's much better. <clears throat> what the hell? Huh. Alright. <clears throat> so let's just test all of our caps for continuity on traces. Um, okay, that one... I seem to have lost my uh, Sharpie. Where did it go? Yep, I gotta find my Sharpie here. Hang on a moment. Alright, so we tested this one. And that's good, that's good. And okay. All right. Oh man, see like, look at this. This is why I checked this stuff. Look at this one here. See that? It's, it's connected, but <laughs> just barely. So there's almost no solder on that one. And this one here has a, it, both of these are barely even soldered in. So whenever I get one of these that's already been capped and it has issues, this is why I inspect this stuff, because you get stuff like that. Okay. Uh, what 
else we got? We got more here, okay. And is there another one in this area? No. Okay, those all seem okay. Well, that goes down to here. There we go. <clears throat> This one here looks pretty rough. Okay. Where the hell does that go? It's a single sided board. Where the hell does that go? Okay. So that one's okay. Those share the same. But where the hell does that one go? Huh. Does that go down? There it goes, okay. Okay, so that means that this one's good, and this one's good, and that one's good. Ugh, here's another one. There's another one right there. So that one's good. We got this one here. Okay. That one's good. Got we finally found one with a lifted trace, two lifted traces. That's this one. Uh, 
but it's got continuity, so we'll mark it. Is that all of them? I think that might be all of them. All right, so we got all of our caps seem to have continuity, so there's no lifted or broken legs or pads, so to speak. Let's check our HOT. HOT is good, remarkably. Uh, let's check to see if our vertical IC has any shorted pins. So we're just going to go to ground here. And we're going to check all of our pins to ground. I don't know which... Ideally, it's only going to be one. I don't know which one it is. So there's ground. So that was pin 13, 12, 11, 10. And that goes up to... Yep, that's definitely a ground. And none of the other ones read to ground, so it's, it's not shorted. So a vertical collapse could be caused by something else, but we'll change it out anyway just to see. Um, Okay, and it's uh, it's also a very dirty PCB. You know, the vertical collapse could also be caused by IC401 here as well. So we'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, so let's uh, let's get it powered on because it was it was working previously. It just was collapsed. So. Let's just hook it up and see what it looks like, and if maybe maybe it's a problem with his, maybe his yoke is bad. That's why it's collapsed. Maybe it might work just fine for me. We'll find out. Well, let's get it hooked up and see what happens, but I also want to mention, let's say you have one of these that's totally, completely, utterly dead. You turn it on, there's no ticking, no activity, no nothing. Just like the, the uh, 7400, 7500, U2000, U5000, uh, U101 right here is a switch mode power supply chip, and when, when this goes bad, the entire chassis is totally dead. So if you get one of these that does nothing, you most likely have a bad uh, switch mode power supply chip. <clears throat> so it's really only two things. To, I mean, there's not really any reason to even test it. Because if it powers on, it's good. If it doesn't power on and totally dead, it's not good. So <laughs> that's really all you need to know about that. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and plug it into a tube and see what we get. Uh, first things first, though, we already inspected our uh, our pots so those should be okay but let's make sure that we get oh, well that's not good either you just notice this there's a, a the rubber boot is annihilated here it's got the nylon security piece in there as well as being sealed so it should be okay if it's not I have a fly back off this donor one that I can steal from so this thing is pretty haggard <laughs> so but before we hook it up let's fix this uh, focus wire here and that clean that broke clean off Out you go. Oh, I see why, because it's so short. It's it's tied up so it's tied up so much that it doesn't even reach. It doesn't even reach. Well, someone tied this up like a dumbass. And no wonder it yanked itself off of there. I'm gonna just cut all of it for now tie it up later. Now we've got, now we got what we want. So let's cut this off and make a fresh, we don't need much. There you go. Just twist off the plastic in it makes a nice twist on the wire as well. Let's grab some flux. 
little dab will do you. Not too much, you don't want it to drip on your stuff there. There we go, just like that. Put that through here. And I like to bend this around here. It's kind of a strain relief, if you will, but now you can't even see what I'm doing. Sorry about that. There we go. But there you have it. Let's add a little bit more. Okay. So now that is done. And I realized just now I put it on backwards. Son of a... <laughs> Ugh. You son of a motherless goat! Let's go this way with it. Why are you not going in there now? Ah, oh, come on, man. Here, okay. You want to play hardball? We'll play hardball. That's fine with me. Okay. Give that a moment. That should be pretty good. All right. Snap on, snap off the snapper. All right. I think we're ready. So let's just get a tube. This is compatible. This is compatible with the K7000, the K7400, and a U2000, and a Henrex Polo, and of course the Neotech. So you can put this on any of those five tubes and yoke set up and it'll work just fine. So I'm gonna grab a uh, K7000 tube and, and neck, uh, tube and uh, yoke, and we'll get this plugged in. And we'll see if it turns on, and if it is, if it does, is it collapsed? If it is, we'll try and figure out what's wrong. So stand by one moment. Okay, all hooked up. Anode, neck, yoke, ground, video, and our remote board. Everything is good to go. So, yeah, this is actually a K7400 tube that I had a 7000 on. It's kind of a sordid history. It came out of a uh, Ms. Ms. Pac-Man Gallagher 25th anniversary and this was given to me because the chassis died and they threw it away or something and I got the tube. So it has a bit of a screen burn but of course the light's going to be off so you can't see so we can actually look at the screen. But we're all hooked up, ready to go. I got my test pattern generator on and this is set here in case we need to make adjustments according, well, assuming that it actually is working but uh, I was told it was collapsed and I got a, a, sent, a picture sent to me showing it was collapsed and all that so now that I look at this if you look here, it looks like somebody missed a capacitor. There obviously used to be a capacitor there, and there's one missing. And I just now noticed that. And do I have an... I, I do not have a neck board on this donor chassis, so I can't tell. Um, but let's just turn it on and see what we get. Okay, so one, two, three. Is it going to even turn on? And if it does, do we have collapse? Here we go. Yes, it turns on. I can hear kind of a high-pitched tone. And what do we ha what do we have here? Yep, collapse. Darn it. Well, um, I guess we'll take a look, see if we can figure it out. I'm very suspect of this cap being missing. I doubt that's the problem, but you never know. So, yep, obviously, collapse. Well, okay, off it goes. Let's tear back into it, see what we can find. All right, so the first thing I want to do is put a strain relief on these power wires because they're going to eventually break off. So I'm going to put the... the do I have a screw small enough for that? Hell no. How about... Uh, this? Would that fit in there? It's not the right kind. How about this? That should work. So let's get this in here.
Okay, and then I want to put this zip tie through here like this. And you want to put the wires across the smooth part as opposed to the edge here so they don't get worn into and short. Okay. Now, that's much better. Let's take a look at this missing cap. And uh, I got my ground wire soldered on here because it's this very specific type of connector here for the ground. It's got two, two pins there. On the Neotech, it's a very specific ground connection, so I just soldered a wire right to the ground plane. So we'll just take this off here, just for the moment. Uh, but if we look here, you can clearly see that there's supposed to be a cap here, and there used to be one there. If we look at the solder pad, somebody, I think, forgot to put the cap back in. You can see there used to, absolutely used to be a cap there. Somebody has not reinstalled a new one. So let's do that. Let's find out what it's supposed to be and get one in there. So, and then uh, someone's changed out this. Obviously the pot broke and they put in the wrong kind. I don't even know if it works. We'll find out. I mean, if, oh, I, I also don't think that this is the cause of the vertical collapse, but it very well could be, and you don't know. Like I say, I have no idea what that's supposed to do without looking into the circuit and researching it, but obviously there's supposed to be something there. So I think what we'll do is I'm gonna re replace this cap just to see what difference this missing cap makes. Um, I don't think that it would have anything to do with the vertical collapse. But just for the hell of it, let's go ahead and find out what it's supposed to be. And get it in there. Man, these are all pretty bad. I don't know who worked on this before, but they should not be doing this. And this pot that they changed, they didn't even, didn't even solder it in. Man. to this seems okay but let's figure out what the cap what that's supposed to be let me do some quick research and I'll be right back all right so after some quick research it turns out that the reason this cap is missing is because it's not part of the standard cap kit apparently uh, C920 here and C924 are both 250 volt 22 originally from the factory they're 250 volt 22 so someone changed out this one but they removed this one and didn't put another one back in, most likely because from what my research shows that this isn't included in the normal cap kit. But uh, what's originally supposed to be here is a 250 volt 22 microfarad. I just happen to have a number of these in my stash, so I can, I'll put this in here. And then I don't suspect that it'll fix anything. Uh, but we'll try it again. Just for the sake of scientific research, see what difference it makes. And if nothing, we will uh, continue troubleshooting. But there was a cap there previously, and there should be a cap there again. There's no reason to leave it out. So, all right. Okay, let's get it back on the tube again and see what difference, if any, changing that out makes.
So here we go. Okay, so we got our new cap installed in C924. I doubt that it will do anything, but let's find out. We got anode neck yield ground video uh, in power. So uh, here we go. One, two, three. Oh, okay, came on. And what do we have? Nope. Didn't think it'd do anything, but it was worth a try. So let's continue troubleshooting, see what we can find this time. All right, so let's just start by taking readings at the vertical IC, um, this guy down in here, because that'll tell you a lot sometimes if you got issues with your collapse or vertical size, just reading your, uh, taking a reading in ohms across all the pins to see if you have any kind of anomalous readings. That will tell you a lot sometimes. Um, we've already verified just from visual inspection that none of these vertical pots are broken. Uh, vertical size, position, or hold. So this should be not, not our problem. So let's just read across our vertical IC here and see if we get any kind of odd readings. Alright, can we how close can we get in here? Okay. So let's go to ground and pin one to ground. Um about 1.2k that's not odd. Uh 10K, pin 2, pin 3, 71K, pin 4, oh, 7.1 mega ohm. Look at that. Pin 4. 7 mega ohm. Well, that's not good. Pin 5. Look at that. 4 mega ohm. 4.5 mega ohm. Pin 4 and 5. Or in the mega ohm, pin 6, 25K, pin 7, 4K, pin 8, 25K, pin 9, 20K, pin 10. I think that's our ground. That's our ground. 11, 2.7K, 12. Yeah, 50k, get whatever however high it goes, and then there's 13, 11k. So pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 mega ohm, and 5. 4 point. So we got two pins in the mega ohm. We either have a bad IC or we have an open resistor. So what's tied to pin 4 and 5? Pin 4 doesn't appear to have any trace on it. So 4 is, inter is an internal connection. 5 goes here to this capacitor, C309, and that's been replaced. It's a straight shot to, I think we simply have a bad vertical IC. Now I've got this donor chassis here, but it's missing components, so we can't rely on readings, but I want to see what pin 4 and 5 reads on this one. Okay, one, two, three, four. Same thing, huh? Seven mega ohm. Four point five. Maybe that's normal. I can't even imagine why that would be normal, huh? Yep, seven mega ohm. Well, unless this had collapsed as well, I don't know. You know, I do have a working one of these in my multi-Mortal Kombat machine. I got it right over here on my right shoulder. I got a multi-Mortal uh, Kombat machine, so I got one of these in there. I may pull it out just to get a good reference chassis for testing because I'm skeptical on whether or not this one would become a parts chassis as well because of vertical collapse. It's very likely. Uh, it also could be that the pin 4 and 5, well, I, definitely pin 5 is not open internally because uh, it's got a line going right to a capacitor. So it's possible that 
I just have my donor chassis also has collapse. And it could be the same bad two pins. Uh, is there a part number on this IC? I can't read what it says. Uh, 7835 LA7835 Do I have any of those? Uh, hang on a moment. Alright, so I pulled the chassis out of my multimodal combat. This is another, this is actually I think a 25 uh, it's done a 2515C because it has the pincushion board on the side over here to make it a, 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 a round image versus a square image. I think it's a it's an alternate version. Of, I think it's 2515D. I can't recall, but it, the 2515C is the one we're working on without the pincushion board. Now, this is a different variant, and you can see that the, even the remote boards are slightly different. Because see how this one has a pincushion. Uh, this is the one for the one we're working on that has collapsed. There's a pincushion pot on this one. On this one there's not because you adjust the pincushion through this. Uh, there is a pot right here to adjust your pincushion right there. So that's why this is slightly different. But let's take some readings here. So let's go right to pin. Well, let's go through all of them since we um, we know this one's working. So if we go to pin 1, that was the same. Pin 2, that's the same. Pin 3, yeah, there's 4. Pin 4, yep, 7 meg, same thing. Pin 5, 4.5 meg. So that's a normal reading. Gosh darn it. So much for that. Five, six, yeah, seven. Wait a minute, seven is one K. What's what's seven on this other one that's not working? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Well, that's not the same, but like I say, these chassis aren't identical, so... But that's not a crazy off-reading. Um, eight... Four hundred and thirty K. Twenty K. Hmm. Nine. Ten. That's our ground. Eleven. Twelve. Whoa, wait a minute. Twelve is six meg. This is a working chassis. And twelve to ground. 13 mega ohm. Yep. 13, 12K. So apparently pin 12 should have 13 mega ohm. Is six mega ohm. Hmm. Well, let's start checking some resistors. Alright, 
that's the same. Um, one ohm. One point two. This looks like 150 ohm. You know, yep, 150, 149.9. This should be 0.4 ohms, 0.2, close enough. Um, not sure what this one is supposed to be. 15 ohms, that seems about right. Let's check this one. Yep, okay. Well, that's all the resistors that should be part of that circuit. Hmm. Well, in an effort to not make this a super long video, let me do some more testing, and when, if and when I find something, I'll come right back. Okay, so I found something. I can't guarantee that it's the it's the cause, but it's very interesting. So right here is R120. I just went through and was testing. I tested all the all of the caps and all of the resistors and all of the little NPN and PMP transistors and uh, everything around this whole area. I tested everything here and then moved over to here. This is the power supply section, but I can't rule out something over here isn't the cause. So if we actually zoom in here, you'll see that this resistor here, R120. If we look at the manual, we can see that R120 is supposed to be where where'd you go? Where'd you go? Okay, here we go. Sorry. Uh, you see R120. It's uh, I've been working on a machine. That's why my hands are painted. <laughs> I got black. Um, my other channel, you'll see, I'm working on a, a Nintendo Super System, and I got paint all over me. Sorry about that. But you see R120 there. If we scroll over, it should be 4.7 ohm. Now if we go to our donor chassis and we test R120, stay there, okay, you can see that it reads 4.5, close enough. Now if we go to our, collect, our collapse chassis here and we read R120. It reads, it jumps all over the place. So it's definitely not good. So if we take it out of circuit, let's see what it reads out of circuit here. Okay, out of circuit. I wonder if it's open. Well, it's not open, but it reads 102K. So that is absolutely incorrect. So let's remove this and install the one from our donor chassis. Because so far that's the only thing I've found. So I'm, I'm going to be curious as to what kind of change that will make. Because the, the manual specifically calls for a 4.6, was it? 4.7, and this one reads 4.7, well, 4.5. This one's 102K, so obviously this is not good. Yeah, 102K. So let's take out our 4.5 one here. Make sure it still reads correctly out of circuit. And it's definitely the right resistor because if you look at it, 
we got let's zoom in we've got yellow violet gold and gold and yellow violet gold gold so we've got one that reads 102k and one that reads 4. 4.5 102k and 4. Point, was it 4.9 so yeah I'm safe bet that this is no good so we'll set that aside uh, yep uh, yellow, violet, gold, gold. So let's put our meter away. And let's install our well let's install our good R120. And let's get it hooked up and see if that makes a difference. Fingers crossed. Okay, time to test it. Test our theory here. Hopefully this was the cause. We're about to find out. We got everything hooked up. Uh, anode, neck, yoke, ground video, and remote board and power. So let's turn on our test pattern generator. And one, two, three. Hopefully it works. Okay, we got power. Come on. I found nothing else wrong. This has to be it. Oh, ha, ha, ha! Success! There you go. Bad resistor. Bad, what was it? Uh, I don't remember offhand. 2 uh, was it uh, R120? Bad R120. Look at that. Of course, this looks like utter garbage. Um, let's do... Where's my remote board? Okay. Uh, brightness and contrast completely down. Um, let me actually get... Hold on, I'm going to actually cut here. I'm not going to change anything, touch anything. I'm going to get the camera on the tripod, get it set up. We'll make our adjustments here. All right, camera is set up. So, okay, where's my screwdriver? Here we go. Okay, so brightness and contrast are all the way down. We'll turn up our flyback until we get... So there's our raster lines. Turn it down until the raster lines just go away. And then brightness and contrast back up to desired level. Oh my god, that's terrible. Each position... Uh, I need to adjust the secondary adjustment here. Uh, can't get to that. There we go, roughly there. Horizontal size. Does that work? I gotta go the opposite way. It's hard. I can't. I can't reach the darn thing. Is the problem? Uh, there we go. Vertical position. Vertical size. Well, it's all nervous from this remote board. Needs a yeah, vertical size pot is dirty. You can see it jumping around. Vertical hold. Yeah, that vertical. See it jumping around there. That vertical size pot's no good. Um, Man. 
I'm going to turn this off for a second. And I'm going to reseat the connections on this thing. Now when I was tooling around in here, it had kind of flaked out on me for a second. Okay, let's see what that does. There it goes. That was weird. Okay, now we're stable. I think this vertical size pot is bad, or all these pots are bad. We'll just leave it there. Okay, well, so that's just a terrible, terrible picture. Um, the colors are all wrong. Focus looks really good, but we have really bad color problems. We have no red. The green pot doesn't even move. It's frozen in place. And I can't adjust the blue pot because it's facing downward here. Yeah, something on the neck board is very wrong. Well, um, yeah. So with our brightness and contrast all the way down, and the screen pot right where it should be, I have absolutely no brightness control, basically zero. That's brightness all the way up. Contrast all the way up. And we basically have almost nothing. So, gonna have to troubleshoot a bit further and see if we can get this to look better. Okay, so some very interesting things have happened here in the troubleshooting and I'm gonna say that I got this completely fully repaired. So let me give you a breakdown of what all I had to do to get this working. Uh, I would have shown everything, but it would have been like a two-hour video, and the, the, no one's going to watch a two-hour video. They're going to just skip right to the end. So to make this a, a quicker video, uh, it turns out there are multiple problems with this. The original initial issue of the collapse was due to the bad R120. The bad R120 was causing the collapse after we replaced that. That fixed the collapse. I'll set that aside. And then we talked about how we had a really terrible, terrible image and that turned out to be the B plus pot. The B plus pot at, R, at location R112, which is right there, R112, that pot is supposed to be a 5K ohm pot. Well, the one that was in there, the maximum that it would read was 220 ohms. Uh, I could turn it, um, I could turn it down and it would go down to you know 200 and 180 and 150 and 100 and zero but the maximum that it would read was 220 ohms and in that instance uh, in that occurrence my b plus was only at 94 volts it's supposed to be 125 so the highest the b plus would get would be 94 volts and that i can't even believe it would even power up with 94 volts so that was insane but so i took this out and, and removed the one from my donor chassis here and put put it in uh, this chassis after doing that and getting it set to the proper setting, my uh, B plus went to 125 volts. I was able to adjust it and that works perfect now. So we had uh, a bad B plus pot as well. And then I mentioned that we had a bad or a wrong uh, pot there in the blue uh, cutoff there. BK is blue cutoff, green cutoff, red cutoff. So the blue cutoff pot, I had to put another one in there. It's the wrong kind, but I'll say the reason for that is the fact that uh, this one that was in there was not only the wrong kind, 
Uh, you can see here at least I have it set to where it's facing out and not straight down. I think the other one was straight down. Uh, if I No, it was straight up. I think it was straight up. Now tell me, do you really want to love me forever? Oh, oh, oh. This one was straight up. And not only was it the wrong kind, uh, but it was, it is a uh, 10K ohm, 10K ohm potentiometer. It is supposed to be 500 ohms. All of these cutoff pots are supposed to be 500 ohms. And someone I think just grabbed a pot at random, didn't bother to check to make sure it was the right rating, and threw it in there. And that was part of the reason why we had an overly blue image, uh, coupled with the, the bad B+. Plus. So we had a bad uh, blue gain pot as well. Or it, the pot's probably okay, but the, uh, the completely wrong rating. Let me put these up here on that side. Uh, and then the green pot, I uh, tried to adjust the green pot. You can see I had to change that one out too. Uh, the green pot was internally broken. It was reading 200 ohms, and no matter how much I turned it, it was always 200 ohms. And it was it's all rusted, and it was internally bad. So we had a green a bad green cutoff pot as well. And last but not least, the, the image being unstable when you adjusted the vertical size, I had to replace the vertical size pot. After replacing the vertical size pot, the image is nice and stable as well. So altogether, we had some, uh, some bad solder joints that were likely okay, uh, but because it was working, just collapsed. So we had some, some bad solder joints. We had a bad B-plus pot. We had the wrong rating of blue cutoff pot. We had a bad green cutoff pot. And we had a bad R120. Uh, oh, I think I'm missing, I got five components here. Oh, and the bad, uh, number six was the bad vertical size pot. So all together, those were the, 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 uh, the cause of all the issues. So now I got everything adjusted and working perfectly. So let's go ahead and I want to kill this overhead light. And, uh, yep, we're all set up. I'll just show everything here before we turn it on. It's all good to go. We're setting here, wait, that's 34 volts across the uh, capacitors is slowly dissipating, as you can see, because I just had it on and do, do it some testing. But our v B plus should be 125 volts, and the way you hook it up is you can see there's a resistor right here. That resistor is, uh, what is that, R112, R117. You hook up to that leg of R117, as you can see towards the inboard of the chassis, R117, and of course ground to your frame here. And that's how you read your B plus should be 125 volts and you adjust it again at R112 right there. And like I said before, the maximum I could get was 94 volts and that was with the pot cranked all the way up and turns out it was bad. It was only reading 220 volts, or I'm sorry, 220 ohms. So now that we have that repaired or that replaced, uh, yeah, we're ready to go. So let's turn on our test pattern generator and we'll turn on the rig. One, two, three. Powered right up. And let's get uh, this on the tripod, and there you go. It looks a bit too blue in, in camera, but in person it's, it's pretty good. And, yeah, um, we'll let it warm up here for a few moments. Actually, you know what, I, um, I forgot I was going to show the B-plus here. Oh, dang it. 125.9. The longer it's on, the more it changes, but uh, 125 is where we're set to, so that's good. All right. For some reason, it looks more blue in the camera, but it's actually pretty good in person. So there's... Uh, whoop, I went too far. So yeah, you can see we've got full color bars. Um, red, green, blue. Shut up, you Logic Pro. My Logic Pro's <laughs> acting like a creaking door over here. Uh, okay, so there's our RGB. Everything looks great. Crosshairs, or crosshatch pattern, I should say. Um, we need to turn our contrast down just a bit. Yeah. But... You know, this is not staying on this tube, so there's no reason to go full to full nine when it comes to setting and, and uh, doing all the adjustments and colors and stuff. So there's your checkerboard pattern. Yeah, so that's it. It's good to go. Uh, I don't know why it looks so blue through the camera, I guess. Maybe, I mean, in person it's not too blue. 
Uh, let me s let me adjust our blue gain here. I guess that's a little better, but like I say, it's not worth spending an hour trying to tweak this because it's not staying on this tube. But it's all repaired. Yeah, and I mean, our really terrible image was due to extremely low B+. After getting that solved, it was just a matter of uh, some fine-tuning and replacing the other pots that were bad, and we're good to go. See, now we are... Uh, now we're 125.6, so yeah, it's that's perfect. Um, but there we have it. So I appreciate you watching. Uh, this was a learning experience for me. I've never had a uh, vertical collapse uh, Neotech across the bench. So I'm glad we were able to figure it out without much uh, experience. So hopefully this helps out somebody else in the future. If you have vertical collapse and you're, you saw what I did to test the vertical IC and everything else around it, if you have vertical collapse still after all that, make sure you check out uh, R120, that little guy right there. So I appreciate you watching. Uh, like, share, and subscribe if you want to. Hopefully you learned something. That's the whole point of this. I know I did. Um, yeah, and we'll see you next time.